Let's talk about the interaction between a B cell that's undergoing B cell activation and a helper T cell, also known as a TFH or follicular helper T cell, also known as a, help, a CD4 positive helper T cell. So there's a, in, there are a number of interactions that go on that allow this activated B cell to undergo the processes of isotype switching and affinity maturation. And these processes require interaction with the helper T cell. So let's see that. So here's a B cell, and it has its B cell receptor on its surface, which, which seems to have bound an antigen. That's great. And don't forget there's the B cell co-receptor that's also engaging complement on the surface of the pathogen. So we've got binding of antigen to the antigen binding sites of the B cell receptor. That's sending a signal into the nucleus. We've got engagement of the B cell co-receptor. That's sending a signal into the nucleus, so the cell it could undergo mitosis. It knows it's going to attack something, um, but what level of attack will it be? So here's where we get help from the helper T cell. So what B cells must do at this point, if they want to get help from a T cell, is they need to show the T cell what they're binding. They do that via a process called receptor-mediated endocytosis, which we'll cover more when we talk about T cells in the next unit, but we'll introduce that concept here. So what, uh, hopefully you know what receptor-mediated endocytosis is. Endocytosis is taking something into a cell, into a vesicle. Receptor-mediated means use binding that thing using receptors. So actually what occurs here is something similar to phagocytosis. It's not phagocytosis, B cells are not phagocytes, but B cells will internalize the pathogen, bring it inside the cell in a vesicle, that's the endocytosis part, using the B cell receptor. Now, why would a B cell take in what it's bound, take in that antigen? Well, it's gonna process that antigen and present it to T cells. And we're going to learn in the next unit about these molecules called MHC molecules. In B cells, we learn about MHC2, and they are antigen presentation proteins. And they're going to um, sample what the B cell has taken in by endocytosis and load the pieces of the pathogen, little protein pieces, onto the MHC2 molecule. And these will be presented to the helper T cell. Like I said, we'll go into great detail into this process in the next unit. But suffice it to say, helper T cells need to be shown bits and pieces of the pathogen via this protein complex called MHC2. So this is called antigen processing and presentation. Again, we will cover it in more detail in unit three when we talk about T cells. So. B cells internalize the pathogen, process it and present it on MHC class two to helper T cells. Helper T cells have a T cell receptor on their surface. The T cell receptor must bind and match the uh, protein part that is presented on MHC class two. Again, much more detail into this in the later chapters or in the next unit. Um, if the B cell has shown this to the T cell and the T cell says, yep, that whatever you bound, that thing doesn't belong in our body, the T cell will now begin giving permission to the helper, to the B cell to um, unleash a highly specific attack. So this is going to involve signal sending into the nucleus of the T cell, telling the T cell to put a protein on its surface called CD40 ligand or CD40L. The T cell also will release cytokines, small proteins that are communication molecules that are going to communicate to the B cell. So the uh, T cell is talking to the B cell, telling it what to do via cytokines and CD40L. CD40L or CD40 ligand will bind to another protein found on the surface of B cells, which we haven't covered before, but now we're going to cover. It's called CD40. So when CD40 found on the surface of B cells, bind CD40L, found on the surface of helper T cells, when these two uh, proteins engage with, with each other, that's going to send a signal to the inside of the B cell, along with cytokines being released from the T cell, going to uh, cytokine receptors on the surface of the B cells. These will help send a signal to the B cell and says, you know what, whatever you're binding with your B cell receptor, that is definitely a pathogen. 
we definitely want to unleash an attack and a really thorough attack. So we're going to um, do the things that occur via thymus-dependent antigen activation. So again, thymus-dependent refers to having a T-cell give permission to attack this pathogen. So what's going to occur, and we'll cover it in detail in the next video, is somatic hypermutation and isotype switching. So these two signals that come into the uh, cell, the CD40 ligand and cytokines, will help direct the uh, enzymes AID and UNG, which we covered uh, in chapter four, um, help them be utilized for isotype switching, somatic hypermutation, and affinity maturation, which we will uh, see again in the next video. So this is just showing you the interaction between a B cell and a helper T cell, the interaction that is required if a B cell is going to undergo somatic hypermutation, affinity maturation, and isotype switching.